Today we're going to talk about Anthropic's brand new model context protocol and how you can use it to add superpowers to your AI applications. So almost two weeks ago, Anthropic introduced their new model context protocol. So what actually is this? So in their blog post, they describe it like this. The model context protocol is an open standard that enables developers to build secure two-way connections between their data sources and AI powered tools. The architecture is straightforward. Developers can either expose their data through MCP servers or build AI applications, MCP clients, that connect to these servers. So basically, if you've been playing around with LLMs, you might know that LLMs are basically just text in, text out. They basically take in a user's input and then predict a logical response as output. LLMs don't actually have any access to outside data sources. The only actual knowledge that the LLM has, whatever knowledge it was trained on up until its cutoff date. So for example, an LLM has no idea what today's date is. In order for the LLM to answer this question, you actually need to provide today's date. Then you can prompt the LLM by asking, what is today's date? The LLM will then use this context to create the proper response. Now that's just a simple example. Another example would be asking your LLM, show me the records of employees in my database. Usually the developer has provided some sort of prompt or configuration to the LLM to look for different tools when it doesn't know the answer to something. All of these tools have a well-defined schema. So when it asks for a tool, it knows how to present the tool call, so to speak, back as a response. So when a user asks this LLM app, show me the users in my employees table, the LLM will understand that it does not know anything about this employees table, and then will ask for a tool call. The app is coded in such a way that when it sees such a tool call, it will take the request from the LLM, talk to the database, and then return the result as part of the next prompt. The LLM can then use this context and give a correct answer. Now, up until this point, most people have either coded this from scratch or to use some sort of framework like Langchain, Langgraph, or Llama Index. The model context protocol is a way to standardize this process by allowing people to quickly create clients and servers. It also defines a standard way for these clients and servers to talk to each other. And now that there's a specific specification, developers can create SDKs, clients, and servers in any language they choose. And because this specification is open, these tools should be interchangeable no matter which LLM provider you use or which applications you use, as long as they all follow the MCP specification. Now, since it's released, there has been a lot of activity around MCP. Anthropic has provided its own TypeScript and Python SDKs, and other developers have quickly started building SDKs in other languages, myself included. Over the last week or so, I've been building a Go SDK, which I'll leave in the description down below. In the rest of this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into MCP and see how you can use it in your own applications. Now, if this is interesting to you and you're excited about diving deeper, go ahead and smash that and drop a sub and let's get into it. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at the architecture of MCP and what this looks like. Here in the diagram, you have the application host process. Now, a host is just any application that can utilize MCP servers. So for example, when Anthropic released this protocol, they added this uh, capability to their Claude desktop application. So you can chat with Claude Sonnet or any of their other models and enhance this chat experience by connecting to different MCP servers. And these MCP servers have the ability to do things like connect to your local file system or read an SQLite database or even just pull something from the web. So the host, or in the example that I just mentioned, the Claude desktop application can manage multiple clients. And each client usually has a one-to-one -one relationship with an MCP server. So up here we see client three is connected to server three that maybe connects to some external APIs. And the MCP server over here will provide a list of tools, as I mentioned earlier, to the client that can present these tools in turn to the host, which is normally connected to an LLM. So for example, 
if you want to add file server access or local file system access to Cloud Desktop, you would configure Cloud Desktop to use the file system MCP server. And then this MCP server has a way to query it for a list of tools. And the Cloud Desktop application can then say, hey, Claude, I have these different tools. Whenever I ask you a question and you don't know the actual answer to it, look through this list of tools and see if you can get the answer from there based on the description of the tools. And if you've never used any sort of tool calling, this will become a little bit clear later on in the video when I start demonstrating how this works. Another thing I want to note is that the protocol for the client talking to the server can be literally anything. So in the very first release, the only thing the Claude desktop application can do is talk to servers via what do they call STD IO or standard IO. And literally all that's doing is the client is launching a process in the background, a client process. And that client process is also launching the server process. And they're basically talking to each other directly via a terminal. Uh, let's imagine. Basically, they're, they're sending a message. The, the client process is sending a message to the server process and they're talking directly. There's no network connection. There's none of that. It's just like the most direct connection that you could have between a client and a server. Now, the protocol itself will support things like HTTP. So you could theoretically create a client that talks to a server that's somewhere else on the internet located not on your local machine. Right now, Cloud Desktop doesn't support this. And I think most host applications don't really support this. Some other examples of hosts would be things like a IDE that gives you co-pilot abilities when you're writing code. So they can connect to different MCP servers to enhance this development experience. Basically, because this protocol is open, the sky's the limit on what kind of hosts you can build. And later on in this video, I'll show you a host that I built to communicate with different MCP servers and how you can use them to talk to Claude and even to models on your local machine using Olama. Like I said, this is an open protocol, so you don't actually have to use it with any of Anthropic's models if you don't want to. All right, let me show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. I've got a host application that I created in Go. I'll also link the code for this application in the description below so you can check it out later. Called it MCP host. And what it's just done is connected to two different MCP servers, an SQLite server and a file system server, and then loaded a bunch of tools from this server. And right now it's connected to Claude Sonnet. So I can just talk to Claude like normal. It'll think a little bit and you're going to get your normal response from an L. Hello, welcome to the assistant, blah, blah, blah. Claude has no idea about my file system or the SQLite database that I want to use. So let's first start trying to access the file system. So let's type, can you tell me which files are on the file? system. Claude's going to think a little bit. Now Claude understands that it needs to get the list of directories it's allowed to access. So it passes the first tool call, which is file system list allowed directories. And then the application intercepts this call and understands it needs to call this function on the MCP server, then returns that result back to Claude. Claude takes this information and understands that we've been given access to slash temp slash demo. I created this directory so I don't obliterate anything else on my machine. And because it knows it can access that directory, it's going to use that as the base directory from now on. And then sends another tool call request for file system list directory. And then based on the results, it can only see one file. So it answered correctly. So let's go ahead and see if we can get Claude to create a file. So I'm going to ask Claude, can you create a file? called ping and then add the text pong. So as always, Claude is eager to help. It understands it needs to use the file system write file function. It writes the file and then it does list directory to make sure that the file exists in the directory. And then it also does read file to make sure that the file has pong like I asked. And we can go ahead and check this in our terminal. If I just run this command, 
cat temp demo ping and we can see that it has the word pong so let's try one more thing with the file system i'm going to ask it can you add 10 more pongs because most of these messages are still in the context claude should know what i'm talking about claude says certainly i'll append 10 more pong entries we can see the tool calls for reading the file writing the file and then reading the file once more let's go ahead and double check to make sure claude did its job if we just cat that file again and we can see that it added 10 more Pong. Now, before we get to the SQLite demo, I'm going to give you an example of what context we are actually giving Claude and how Claude knows which tool to call. So I've got a few built-in commands to this tool. First, let's call the server command. Sorry, it's actually servers. And we can see that we have the SQLite server and the file system server. And these are all standard IO servers, which means it's just the client process talking to the server process uh, on my machine. There's no network connection. And this is how you start each and every one of these servers. These servers are actually demo servers that were provided by Anthropic when they launched the model context protocol. So this one is a Python server. So you launch it with UVX with these arguments. And then the file system server is a TypeScript server and you run it with MPX. So these are the two servers. And then we can go ahead and look at tools. And tools is a little bit more lengthy, but you can see under the file system server, we have all of these different tools. And then we have these descriptions. And basically Claude is going to use the descriptions of these tools passed to its context to reason about which tool it should use in order to get the job done. So you can see in the SQLite server, we have this read query. So Claude would use this if it needs to execute a select query on the SQLite database. And basically the same with any one of these other tools. So let's go ahead and start messing around with SQLite. First, let's go ahead and list the tables. So Claude knows to use SQLite list tables, and we can see that this is a brand new database. There are no tables in this database. So let's go ahead and create an employees table. So I'm gonna ask Claude, can you create an employees table with the call for last email and let's say phone and remote. Now let's just keep it at remote. So that should denote whether they're remote or in office. And we'll see if Claude can actually guess what kind of column to create with that. So let's go ahead and send that. So once again, Claude correctly guessed to use SQLite create table. It told me about the different fields it's going to create and it went ahead and created it using the tool call uh, and then listed the tables to make sure that the table is created. And so now it's asking me, would you like to add some sample data to this table or perform any other operations on it? And I'll just go ahead and ask it to add some sample data. Sure, add 10 sample employees, sorry, employees with names from the Breaking Bad series. I spelled the wrong, but good thing about LLMs is they can understand you even if you talk like an idiot. So once again, it went through all the steps that it needed to do to create and verify that it created all of these entries. And finally, let's just ask Claude to display this in a nice markdown table. Can you display the records in a nice markdown tables? And here you go. We have all of our records that we just created in the database and they're displayed in a nice markdown table. Now, just to double check that Claude isn't actually making all of this stuff up, let's go ahead and read from the SQLite database in our terminal. So I used new shell as my terminal, which gives you some nice features for reading in from SQLite databases directly built into the terminal. So all I need to do is run this open command on the SQLite database and then pipe it into this get command to get the records from the employees table. So let's run this. And as you can see, we've got the nice table that we saw before when working with the tool. Now, like I said before, MCP is an open standard and can be used with literally anything you can think of, not only Anthropic's cloud models. So I've built into the tool that I created the ability to talk to local Olama models. So you don't actually have to send anything to the cloud. 
So let's go ahead and run the Quen 2.5 3B model, which is on my local machine. All right, it's loaded. Let's go ahead and say hi. And just like any LLM, it says, hello, how can I assist you today? Now let's uh, ask it about the file we created earlier, the ping file. So I'm going to ask it, show me what is in the ping file. And it looks like we got an error, probably because it doesn't know to look in the temp directory. Let's ask it which directories we have access to. Okay, so let's see if we can get it to look for the ping file there. Hopefully this 3 billion parameter model is not choking on the context. <laughs> Appears there are no files named ping in the temp demo directory. Let's go ahead and try asking for this directly. And hopefully it works this time. All right, it worked. It's just probably the fact that this is a 3 billion parameter model and you kind of have to hold its hand a little tighter than you would with something like Claude. Let's do one last test on this and see if it can display all of the employees in our SQLite database. So hopefully that's enough hand holding and it knows exactly what to do in this case. It knows to use the SQLite read query and it went ahead and pulled up all of the records from the SQLite database. So that's pretty cool. Just as I mentioned before, you can actually start using these on any model you wish. You could use this with OpenAI. You can use this with Olama. You can use this with models hosted on AWS. The sky's the limit. And that's what's great about this model context protocol. The fact that it's an open standard allows developers to build tools and integrations with basically anything that fits the job at hand. And that's it for this quick little dive into the model context protocol or MCP. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how this protocol actually works under the hood. We saw that this allows us to add really cool functionality to not only Anthropic's Claude models, but also any model that you wish to work with. As I mentioned before, I have a Go client and server SDK for building clients and servers with MCP. I'll leave that in the description, as well as the code for this demo host application that we were showing in the video. If you'd like to see me go deeper into some of the code for this or want me to show you some more business use cases for this new technology, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them below and I'd be happy to answer them. Also, if you enjoyed this or you got any value out of it, make sure to smash the like button and drop a sub. And finally, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.